they I was looking, I was trying to do research on you, and it's okay. not not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> I will be a hundred percent honest with you. And I looked I looked up your band camp, and uh, it looks like you wrote your first song, and uh, it came out in nineteen forty eight. Uh, January to be precise. So it's almost 47. Um, and then there's a, a, a song that came out in 49 and then there's quite a gap from 49 to 2006. So I was just kind of wondering what you've been doing for 57 years. I wrote a lot of, a lot, wrote a lot of songs and albums before birth, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-birth. <laughs> well, you know what's funny about that is if I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the show. A couple of weeks ago, I released a show that I did with Richard Lloyd, the guitarist from Television. Oh wow! And he told me he was, I believe it was thirty-six hundred years old, <laughs> and he remembers being born. Was he serious? No. Yeah, no, no. He was. Serious. He's dead serious. You said he was really thirty six hundred years old. I probably you go go and and listen to that episode because it was okay. it's probably one of these most insane <laughs> episodes I heard. I we, we scheduled this episode, uh, th th this interview, and you know I told him it's like I told you it's just it's just two people talking and all, and you know some shows go thirty minutes. Some I I, I had a, an, an artist on and we went two and a half hours. So it wow. just, just depends on, on you, however you want to talk. Mm -hmm. And so we started talking. We talked about him as a child being, you know, he, he remembers he has birth memories being 36. No. Yes, being 3,600 years old. However, the birth memories were from his most recent birth, not the 3,000 years ago. Um, he told me about being a child and getting chemicals from the drugstore and blowing up a Chinese laundromat that was owned by what? his best friend's parents. What? Um, oh, it, it's a, it's crazy. We talked very little music for quite a while. And then we just started getting into the band television. And he's like, I'm just, I got to let you, I got to go in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you shitting me? Okay. Well, Ooh. let, okay. Well, uh, I guess. Ooh. So I started thinking like the story of television is pretty well known to people who like television. Ooh. So I'm like, all right, let's talk about Matthew Sweet. You, you play with Matthew Sweet a lot. Let's let's do that. Wow. So, well, I'm so, 3,601 years old. <laughs> I'm slightly older than that famous person. I'm, you don't look it. I'll, I'll tell you, even upside down. Oh, well, thank you. I'm still <laughs> sideways on my computer. I'm just <laughs> sideways. Can you? Oh, I'm kind of slumping oh, down now, so you can only see like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I can see your from your neck up. There. There we go. I should lean in a little better. <laughs> Damn you, Skype. Oh, I swear. controlling ways. <laughs> the wizards of Skype are just... As far as the dates on Bandcamp, I think I, I'm not, I'm not the most technologically able. <laughs> <laughs> and I think... Are you sh really? I think there was one... I think I started putting in the first album or something, and I found that when I put in the second, and I was using the real dates, and when I put in the second, it did something weird. Like, it wouldn't actually put my albums in sequentially. Oh, wow. And so I figured out that was my my novel and devious method to get around it that I probably, if I knew better, I didn't need but yeah, that is kind of confusing, <laughs> isn't it? It, it? Well, it's more interesting to me. I, I I just wanted to know what was going on in that fifty-seven year gap. <laughs> I just well, thought, you know, yeah. You know, I had a couple. I had a couple naps. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> you Van winkled it, huh? Eat some chips. Ah, there you go. Watch some TV. <laughs> <laughs> the very early days. Yeah. Uh, and I, but I was looking at some of your albums. Actually, I was looking at all your albums and oh, good. listening to them. And, and I saw one, the one that really struck me as so neat, so interesting, was Seven Small Winter Songs. Oh. Because of what you wrote about it. Can <laughs> Thank you. 
So it started out as a, as a kind of a challenge to you and a friend? Yeah, well, yeah, I challenged. I think we were talking about Christmas was coming and, you know, everyone jumps on that holiday album bandwagon. Yeah. Like, you know, at any point, it's sort of like the, it's as inevitable as the, as the sitcom episode where they go to Spain or Hawaii <laughs> or something, you know, it's like yeah. most people at some point are going to put out a holiday album. And so we were joking about that. And, you know, it's not like anyone would care if either one of us put out a holiday <laughs> album, but we were saying, we should do it. We should put out a holiday album, man. And, and we're laughing about just doing it in a single day. And so I, we kind of were to saying, yeah, let's, we'll challenge each other and we'll we'll each write a holiday album in a single day oh my gosh. and so the weekend came and i had the time to do it and and so i contacted him and i said all right we're gonna do it we're gonna today's the day we're gonna do it and <laughs> he was like oh yeah i gotta go over there now so <laughs> <laughs> to be fair i think he had more of a life than oh. i did <laughs> so yeah you didn't do it, but I decided I was kind of in the mood and I liked the challenge. And so I just sat down and, and started ripping through these songs. And I really, I don't really write that way. I um, write when I feel like it, when an idea strikes me. I don't generally write by appointment. And so okay. it was fun, though. I had a blast. And yeah, I wrote all of those in a matter of, I don't know, it was just a few hours, a couple hours, a few hours. And... I um, forgot them promptly <laughs> and then went on and I was, I think, a recording another album with Jeff Stewart Saltzman at that time. And um, and then he suggested, I think, that I record the Seven Small Winter songs. So I literally had to find the tapes that I'd, my little <laughs> memo tapes that I'd recorded the, the oh, ideas wow. on and I had to relearn them because I'd completely forgotten them because they just were done in that one day. Oh, wow. And one lyric, I actually have never told anyone this, the December song that's at the very end, there's mm -hmm. this, all of the stars in the heavens stare at themselves in the river. And the original line I had written down was, all of the stars at the in the heavens, stare at the Seven Eleven, <laughs> <laughs> and that was. And then I decided to change that, and it kind of altered the whole course of the song. <laughs> but I wrote that because my brother used to, my brother Joe used to leave shopping for Christmas till the last minute, oh, and God. there was a Seven Eleven or plaid pantry, as we have over here too. That was down the street and his gifts were the greatest gifts ever because he would wait till Christmas Eve and then he'd go to the 7-Eleven and he'd get like a six pack of beer for one of my brothers <laughs> and he, my, one of my most prized Christmas presents ever was a box, a full box of Smarties. Oh my God. All my own from the 7-Eleven. I just thought that was oh. that was a brilliant genius gift. That is awesome. It's better than yeah. like Slim Jims and Circus Peanuts. Oh, That's okay, sure. okay. Then wait a minute now. <laughs> you cannot put Slim Jims in the same camp with Circus Peanuts. Oh, <laughs> uh oh. Slim Jims are good. Slim Jims are good, but Circus Peanuts. I, nobody eats those. Oh, you know what? When I was a kid, I actually liked them. But no, I did. I did. But then again, I, if it was candy, I'd eat it. It didn't matter. What do they taste like? I don't I, think I could even put one in my, They're like They're like styrofoam chewy shit. styrofoam. Yeah, they're like chewy styrofoam. And I've eaten oh. that too. So. Oh, wow. I ate, a, I ate all kinds of weird stuff as a kid. Chewy usually, usually, on a, usually on a dare or something. That was one of those, you, you're not going to do that. Oh, yeah, I am. I think that's the worst thing you can ask someone to do on a dare is to eat a circus peanut. <laughs> well, yeah, because now it's that's just like what diabetes tastes like. It's just, <laughs> it's just oh, God. oh, you're right. Are you sponsored by circus peanuts? Uh, no, no uh, it's diabetes. I'm, I'm sponsored by diabetes. You're sponsored by diabetes yeah. as well. Anyway, yeah. I got to get that's some sponsors for this show. I don't know. You got any suggestions? I think diabetes is a great idea. <laughs> if I could contact them, I don't know where their headquarters is. I think it's somewhere think down you, south. 
I think we might have lost Circus Penis at this point. <laughs> Maybe that's, might to, that's possible. You might have to find another candidate for that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we, you probably do have Slim Jims because I stood up for Slim Jims. That you know what? I'm going to cut that section out and I'll send it to him. Say, look, sponsor me because <sighs> look at who I got, and we're sponsoring you guys. And just imagine if you if they sent you cartons of free Slim Jims. Oh that would be amazing. My my kids would love it too. Oh my gosh. My well, you'd have especially. to send some to me. Oh, I'm so, I, absolutely. I deserve a cut absolutely. of the Slim Jims. You got it. I, we'll do like a, well, since you actually really stood up for me, I was going to yeah. do like a 75, 25, but we'll do 50, 50. Wow. I'm That's very generous. I'm pretty, well, hey, you're the first person to help me get a sponsor. So after you, everybody else can suck it. So. You're going to have to let me know because that would be pretty <laughs> great if you did get Slim Jims now. Right, that would be a major land. I'm going to do it and I will CC you on the email. Okay. So. And then I'll get my box of Slim Jims. Exactly. Exactly. My so. monthly supply of Slim Jims. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was going through your music, I noticed that your early stuff is is, is the, the, the music is very... Uh, I don't even know what the right word is. I don't want to say not sparse. It's 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 just kind of you and your piano, and it's very uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of instrumentation to it. But as you progress into into um, uh, Falami and the new album uh, Run Tiny Human, you you added more instruments, and you know was that something that was conscious, or is that just a progression that that you've just been working towards? I don't think I agree because okay. like when I think of uh, for example Half Hours with the Lower Creatures and well in a couple of my albums you probably didn't see the first two Do Not Stare and Jonah Days were big you know there's like there's a number of big band uh, songs okay. and then also but they're more it was a little more you know folk singer songwriter but with these big pop moments kind of weird pop moments in them i mean at that point i i struggled against getting slotted in that kind of very narrow place uh, yeah with people people um i think are more open now toward eclecticism with music at that point lilith fair was happening for you know like when i put out my first albums and Okay. People really wanted, I think a lot of people struggled with women in music being uh, anything different. You know, there was this very okay. difficult neat. There was, you were just by virtue of being a woman, you were kind of stuck in this niche of the you know, singer songwriter. And yeah, well, you know, yeah. it was hard to, to break out of that. But by my third album, I felt like, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't, I've never really cared to, I, I've always had the comfort of being able to really do what I want to do. Um, and by that time I was like ready to just say, fuck it. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started working with someone who meshed very nicely with that philosophy of life. <laughs> um, so that, and that would be Jeff. And that's not to say that I didn't work with people who, I feel like brought out things in me in my first two albums too, because I did both Larry, who I recorded my first album with, um, I'd never recorded anything, you know, and he was helping me out and he was this really just naturally talented, gifted guy at a lot of instruments and a lot of, um, he had this studio that he'd built by himself and oh, wow. he was, he was incredibly encouraging. Um, and I'm proud of that first album. Very few people have heard it, but I'm proud of it. And then um, on my second on Jonah Days, I worked with Rob Stroop, who's produced a lot of albums in the Portland area and is now living down in um, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. He's got a studio oh, yeah. down there. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. And he has a band that um, he's in with his wife called Moody Little Sister, and they, they travel quite a bit and they perform around. But Rob was just a dream to work with. He was... Just super, you know, he, 
I envy people who are very type B, you know, and just, (laughs) especially in music, it's hard to be that way and to be doing something like running a recording studio. Yeah, I can imagine. He's an incredibly creative person and talented musician and everything, but he still managed to create an environment, you know, that was very conducive to creativity and things like that. But Jeff, I met um, mastering those albums and he's, his natural instincts musically, because he's a was a songwriter at one time too. He hasn't been doing it for a long time, but he's very good. His natural instincts and mine, I think, aligned better okay. than with anyone else. And so, yeah, um, that album I recorded, Ormalu, with him was very sparse. So maybe that was one of the ones that's, you were thinking about. That's the first one that that I the first one after the year forty fifty seven year gap that that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. that maybe that's where I'm I'm getting a little confused with some of the, with, with some of your releases. Then, well, I wrote that album to test out, um, you know, how Jeff and I work together, basically. Oh, okay. And, um, so it was pretty sparse, and we both our approach to it was, you know, it was clear that that's that's what it called for those songs. That we wanted that very skeletal kind of approach. That's the word. Yeah. That's so, the best word. but then in half hours of lower creatures, there's a song called stag field and there's, um, beautiful savior and, and Abraham and Isaac. And those are all pretty grandiose <laughs> <You> know, <they're, laughs> for lack of a better word there. I have, I like, I have these polar opposite instincts where I like really sparse things. But then I think I imagine when I'm writing some of these songs that they're all out arena rock songs. Not that that (laughs) the likelihood of me ever playing an arena is extraordinarily low, but that (laughs) is what I, that's what I hear in my head is, you know, so I write these, I have these grandiose kind of huge songs that uh, are smack dab. And I like that juxtaposition. I like having really, small, quiet things next to more, you know, giant things. Oh, yeah. Since we're talking about recording studios, have you ever had any weird things happen while you're recording or, or, or out touring or playing? I love hearing yeah. these behind the scenes stories of like, oh, yeah, you know, I end up you know, having to sing with my head in the toilet or something. Oh, God, that would be terrible. It, yeah, that was. How, did you actually have someone that no, I I embellished that one a little bit. It was a, they they had their head in a piano to get the the sound that they wanted, and then they found oh, out. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, it, it was actually uh, Peter Hayes from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, and then he said that it was actually just as good to stick reverb on it. He kind of did the same thing, so he well, was kind of disappointed with that. The most of the touring that I've done was with a band called Fear of Heights, um, and my friend Chris, and he was very very. You know, one of these rare birds who can, who's talented musically, but who also has the kind of organizational skills that a lot of musicians do not have, <laughs> including myself, <laughs> and that you're sort of called on now. We're all called on to with the do-it-yourself era, you know, to have these skills. And I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but he does. And he had this band called Fear of Heights and he, we toured um, the West Coast, I toured five or six times with him, I think. Oh, cool. And um, so most of my stories come from him because the one tour that I that I went on, where I just had him and, and my friend Ben tour with me, I had a gig booked in Oakland or San Francisco, and it was this little cafe, and we drove all the way down there. It wasn't our only gig, but I only had like three gigs booked on this tour, I think. <laughs> okay. We drove all the way down there from Oregon, you know, from Portland, and walked into the cafe, you know, exhausted, ready to play. And this really, really intimidatingly hip girl looked at us and said, oh, yeah, we're not doing music anymore. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That was it. Just like oh, really. And, and I think my jaw just dropped and I was staring and she said, yeah, we sent you an email. And I said, no, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> you didn't send me an oh. email. Oh my God. So I have this 
commemorative photo of us flipping off the Mama Buzz Cafe. <laughs> so nobody go there. I don't think I think they they're not there anymore. Yeah, right. It worked. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I wouldn't you. have said their name. I wouldn't have said their name if they were still there. I'm, all right, maybe I would have. Maybe. <laughs> well, they deserved it either way. But um, I had to, as far as being on tour with the. With the fear of heights, we stayed one time. Um, I had a friend who was uh, like the director of the sleep studies program at Stanford. Okay. And he let us stay in one of their labs. You know, yeah, you're always, <laughs> <laughs> you know how you you're always looking for home stays and places to crash when you're <laughs> on tour. Right. So he let the band stay in this lab, and and. It, we were each of us in in this. Each of us was had a room of our own with this cutout hole, you know, <laughs> behind your head where you lay down, like so probes, I guess, could right. be put into your brain, okay. and, and people could monitor <laughs> you while you sleep. And fortunately, no one was actually actively monitoring anyone, but. It was freaky. It was late at night, you know, because gigs go. We've been playing in San Francisco. Okay. And, and we drove out to Palo Alto and we stayed in the sleep lab on our way to our next gig. And my friend was very nice and getting us set up in there. But we all went to our separate chambers of horror. <laughs> <laughs> and the weirdest thing is because I am a very, uh, uh, I have an overactive fight or flight syndrome, you know, I mean, it's like okay. uh, a fight or flight instinct. I'm, I'm usually, it's, it can, it can be very difficult for me to relax. I had the best sleep I've ever had in my life. Really? <laughs> Paradoxically <laughs> in that, in that sleep lab, I don't know why. And everyone else oh. really hated it. Oh I heard from God. the band the next day, they're like, Oh, never again. Cause they were just, <laughs> they had the willies totally <laughs> from it. Oh, I think wow. we were woken up the next morning by the staff too, so that was a little unsettling. <laughs> hey, get out! What are you doing? Yeah, Who they are didn't you? know we were. They didn't know we were there. Oh, God, this is such a like three homeless people <laughs> 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 yeah. broke into the broke into the sleep lab to get to uh, take a nap. Exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh! But <laughs> um, yeah, that was one of our most. We had a lot of memorable homestays. One of them, another poor, wonderful friend of mine in Seattle who had this beautiful home on the water. I don't remember what part of the water, like if it was Lake Washington or whatever, extraordinarily generous and letting us stay there. I was the only female in this band. Okay. And so I was the one who would like write thank you notes. And <laughs> yeah. I hate to sound stereotypical, but you know, I was be fussing about things being cleaned up and all this <laughs> kind of stuff. And so I'd always take a last tour of someplace especially if it was a friend of mine whose place we were staying at and somehow the loads of the boys had overwhelmed the system oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and so we and we were heading down to a gig we were on a deadline so we left i was horrified i oh, just God horrified we did everything possible we used plungers we did everything within our power there oh, to God. take care of it ourselves and it it was just it was coming up in the showers oh, <laughs> it was a nightmare that's impressive and so we just left the world's biggest apology i called her you know we oh, were, God. it was a real terrible what the hell were they eating Burritos usually. Oh, gee. <laughs> lots and lots of burritos. <laughs> so you've just released in the past month your latest album, Run Tiny Human. Yes. So how did that get started? I know uh, I had read that that was the result of a dream that you had. One song, okay. uh, the little gyre, the one about the the, the third song on the album mm -hmm. is kind of screamy. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
That was I was the one where I was thinking just idly as I was falling asleep. I was thinking about the space garbage going around the Earth, and then I was thinking about the ocean garbage, you know, mm-hmm. doing its little whirlpool eddy kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And I was picturing the space garbage spying the the ocean garbage. I just was thinking about the. I was just wondering at, you know, wow, we've actually managed to fill space with garbage (laughs) and we've actually managed to fill the ocean with garbage. And we pretty much we you could say we've filled land with garbage as well. So we've just managed to make we've, we've generated so much garbage that we've filled space, land and sea, which is an achievement of sorts (laughs) with Slim Jim wrappers. (laughs) <laughs> oh, there goes our sponsorship. Now, I'm not. I'm gonna cut. I'm not gonna add that in the email. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Take that out because yeah. we want the slim gym. That's right. That's right. Unwrapped slim gym. No, no. I, I mean, I'm sure their wrappers are completely biodegradable. <laughs> Very good. Yes, I am sure so, too. I, now I will just edit those together, and then <laughs> the yep. money, money just roll right in. And yeah. that's such a clever solution too. Exactly. The beauty of basic editing, which is all I know. <laughs> basic, very basic editing. So, so tell me a little bit about the album. Um, is there a kind of theme that runs through the album? Is, is this, is the space junk, sea, water junk, uh, garbage, a theme that runs through it? Or is it, or is it um, I know you put out albums that are just kind of collections of, of other songs that you'd written previously. How long did it take to get everything together and, and get it out to everybody? I usually think for, I mean, for me, I think of albums as one. So, you know, I don't, I want the songs to hold up on their own, but I do when I, when I imagine people listening to one of my albums, which is hilarious because no, <laughs> hardly anyone does this anymore. Well, one, hardly anyone listens to my albums and two, <laughs> definitely hardly anyone listens in the way that I would, you know, that I most fantasize about, which is, <laughs> oh, you sit and you listen carefully from the first note all the way to the end. Cause that's in my head, it's one big song, you know, it's right. one big piece. And most of my albums are thematic or concept albums in that way. And so this one, yeah, I mean, it, it's, and, and they reflect what, what's in my head. And this one is just kind of about all the shit going down, all the um, all the shit hitting the fan, like it is with humanity and kind of things catching up with us um, in terms of the garbage, climate change uh, uh, in America, mm-hmm. uh, the way we've navigated the world, you know, our hubris and our our just obnoxious exceptionalism and the I feel like we're that weird relative of the rest of the world that's been allowed to go their own way <laughs> <laughs> and we have no concept how weird we are and how bad we've gotten do you know what I mean I I can I know what you're saying yeah I think I, I think I'm I understand what you're saying and everyone around us is looking at us aghast and like kicking themselves because they didn't put a stop to it earlier or, you know, they were too indulgent with their idiot child. (laughs) And (laughs) and they, and now they're going, Oh no, why didn't we, why didn't we say something sooner? Cause now, you know, look at what they're left with. So it, it, it's, we should have been, they should have had corporal punishment on us. We should have been spanked. Maybe. We totally should be. We should be spanked now. <laughs> but see, now we probably would like that. <laughs> That's a good point. So. <laughs> we should be spanked in a way that we don't like. <laughs> like Our, okay. I don't know how we'd figure that out. I, I, don't, I don't know. Trial and error. Probably- yeah, and we would probably enjoy that too much <laughs> as Americans as well. Oh man, well, but it's about it's about yeah. It, to me, it's not just I don't know. I feel like 
the songs in the album were written from a very, some of them from a very um, local point of view. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the issues that I'm addressing that are all a little apocalyptic, you know, translate to America and then to the greater world as well. Because we're all, unfortunately and sadly, facing, you know, the polar ice caps melting and and climate change and the, you know, the... (laughs) The delightful resurgence of fascism, which was something I never thought I would see in my time. And, uh, the, the, you know, places getting more populated, more crowded. Um, it's stuff that whether you want to experience it or not, and whether you're really responsible as a source for it or not, the whole world is experiencing it now. It's like those little countries that, you know... They haven't been flying on weekend trips to Paris every weekend. You know, they have they haven't been eating prepackaged food all their lives and yeah. tossing it on the heap, but they're the ones that the water's rising up on and, you know, like subsuming their island and the place that they live. Yeah. So Americans yes, our our impact and our our touch extends beyond so so far beyond us. <laughs> it's like a blessing to the world. <laughs> that sounds sarcastic. I'm not really good about that on that stuff, but it sounded a little bit. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, the album's really compelling, and it's it's. Oh, I really you. enjoyed listening to it. I'm, I've enjoyed getting to know your music. Um, I'm thank you. I'm glad that that we were able to connect. Uh, where's what's the best way to for people to pick your albums up? I mean and you know, your, your brand new one and then go check out your back catalog. Um, Bandcamp okay. is the best place. I support Bandcamp and they, um, they're a little better for musicians as far as the compensation and what you get if someone's deciding to buy an album or a CD and you can just do digital or you can buy hard copies depending on the artist there. So yeah, just look me up on Bandcamp. Oh, awesome. And it. It's not notorious RTB. It's it's Rachel Taylor Brown. Yes. All right. Is Although, there a notorious RTB? I think there is now. <laughs> that, that's that's my new nickname for you. Um, okay. Is there? I'll take it. Are you now? Are you on social media where people can follow you on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that? Just Facebook. Facebook was all I could bear. <laughs> And I do have a I do have a BAM page on there, yeah. Okay, well that's good. Um, and do you have a website where where people can uh, sign up and get get news from you? I do, and I do think people can sign up, but I don't know if it works or not. <laughs> 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 it might be broken, but yeah, it's just racheltaylorbrown dot com. Oh, so awesome! You should be able to find me there. That's pretty easy to remember. Um, I've been updating it and everything. Oh, that's good. That's good. I and mean, you mentioned that you know technology wasn't exactly your thing, so that's good. No, I yeah, I even have to do a little bit of what do you call it? You know, HTML. What you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't I know, really I, know what I'm saying. I don't really know. But I do it, and it's hard. <laughs> oh well, thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate your your talking to me and letting me go on as much as I did about wizards and stuff. Oh, that was great. Wizards and Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> then that could be a band or, or a new album for you. Oh, God. That's like something Seals and Crofts Wizards. would write. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards and Slim Jim. That, that's, oh, man. All right. Now my brain's turning. I don't know. I've got to, I'm going to have to do something with that. I've kept you for quite a while tonight, so I'll, I'll let you know. No, I kind of kept you. I'm sorry. I blabbermouthed to you. Well, you're very easy to talk to, so you're on the right track. Well, thank you very much. This is a song.